In Washington, D.C., there is a monument built in memory of Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights activist who fought for equality among Americans. This memorial is nearly a year old, and many people stream to this place to glance at a man that ended racism in America. And just to come here and see it in person means so much that the writing on the wall and what he stood for. Uh, for us as a race of people, uh, has taken us to another level and given us opportunities that we never would have had. But there is a controversial speech inscribed on the monument where the freedom fighter blew his own trumpet. It's supposed to be changed. However, there is more history in Memphis, Tennessee about Martin Luther's civil rights struggle. And the unchangeable facts about this place remains in the National Civil Rights Museum. This is Lorraine Motel where Dr. Martin Luther was assassinated on 4th April 1968. The place holds the entire history about the struggle for civil rights and the people behind what America is today. The gallery is the section for the strategy of change that shows groups like Ku Klux Klan, formed in Tennessee in 1866, that escalated racial tensions which provoked violence. This group of ruthless racists wore masks, rode horses, carried swords and torches at night. This to the black community meant death. They would actually at night uh, perform lynchings where they would hang blacks, uh, beat blacks, brutalize blacks. So that was their sole purpose and unfortunately the Ku Klux Klan still exists to this day. During the dark days of racism and slavery, blacks and whites never mixed or even shared any amenities. The schools that I attended were all black. There is a lot to learn here and everything is digitalized for convenience since people who storm this place are interested in different epics on America. The great history that brought equality also credits Harriet Tubinan for her unremitting struggle that also saw 300 slaves freed. Around 1950, Daisy Bates also joined the protest, pushing for the separate but equal rule, saying that God gave his only son for the freedom of mankind. Separate but equal was not the case. It was separate, but it was not equal to one another. But there was also one of the most remarkable stories, the Montgomery bus boycott, which was started by Rosa after she entered the bus and refused to give up her seat. During the time of racial segregation here in America, I would have been kicked away from this seat that used to be occupied by normally the whites. But thanks to the men and women who fought for the civil rights to ensure that all Americans are given equal respect. I need that seat now. Please move back. Formerly, blacks occupied only the back seats. This bus is still used as a reminder of the past that so many people died during protests that were crushed by security agents. As you get to the end of the museum, you see the rubbish collector protest gallery that saw Martin Luther King Jr. die. This is the room he was in with his two other reverends. And according to Reverend Samuel Billy Kyles, the only surviving witness of Martin Luther King Jr., the freedom fighter had moved to the balcony at the time he had come to pick the men of God for dinner at his house. Speaking to people in the courtyard, he saw Jesse Jackson and he said, Jesse, you are not dressed for dinner. Jesse said, Doc, I don't need a shirt and tie. I need an appetite. This was the gun that was used to kill Martin, and the shot came from the window of the opposite house, less than 50 meters away. I said, come on, guys, let's go. And so I got about five steps. Kapaya! The shot rang out. I looked back. He had been knocked from the railing back onto the floor of the balcony. There was a tremendous hole in the side of his face. And some began to say the threat. Martin Luther King Jr. had a PhD at 28, a Nobel Prize at 35, and really achieved a lot. But one wonders why he met his death in Memphis struggling for the rights of the garbage collectors. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now. We lost him. We never said he died. They shot the dream according to Reverend Samuel, but not the dream. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, 
But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. The dream is still alive. James Ali Ray, a white supremacist who had a long criminal record, was arrested but denied having shot Martin Luther King. This is the assailant's car he was driving at the time, and since those that make history have no time to write it, this museum holds timeless history. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Sudil Biaruhanga, NTV.